Okay, so let's go ahead and put your math skills to work on this interesting math word problem that involves money. And these type of problems are always fun to solve. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read you the problem. It is the following. Ed has 126 bills made up of fives and tens. The total value is $840. How many fives does Ed have? Okay, so feel free to use a calculator. And if you can solve this, put your solution into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. And then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so just one more time, let's make sure we have a, a basic sense of the question. So Ed has $126 uh, in these bills, right? He has a lot of cash here made up of fives and tens. And of course, the total amount of all this cash is $840. What is the question where we're looking for how many $5 bills does Ed have? And the correct answer is the following. He has 84 fives. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. And uh, matter of fact, somebody might be saying, well, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, maybe I should get the money for solving this problem, these 84 fives. Well, listen, uh, that would be pretty cool if I could just transfer that money. But, uh, you know, that's not for this video or for this YouTube channel. Uh, but anyways, nevertheless, you should feel great about yourself for solving this problem. Now, I did not uh, tell you uh, how to solve this problem when I read it to you, but this is really an algebra word problem. Now, the reason why I did that is because I wanted uh, those of you out there uh, not to be scared away by trying to think about or solve this problem. Now, maybe some of you actually solved this problem using trial uh, and error, or maybe some other technique, but uh, the easiest way to solve this particular problem is using algebra in my humble mathematics opinion. All right, so let's go ahead and get after it. And here is our problem. And the first thing that we wanna do in any math word problem or any problem at that is to read the problem. And I kinda of like to use the rule of three. Read the problem at least three times uh, before you start doing anything. I read it once, then the second time, start getting information. And then the third time, make sure you understand the question because you can't start formulating a strategy uh, to solve the problem unless you're crystal clear on what the question is. And of course, we have uh, Ed with all this uh, cash uh, made up of fives and tens, and the total amount of that cash is $840, but we're looking for how many fives does Ed have? Okay, so we're looking for an unknown value, right? How many, right? Well, how many what? Well, we don't know. So uh, when we have math problems that ask for like how many of this or what is the value of this, we're looking for a specific number uh, and this number or this value is unknown. Well, this is a perfect situation to use a variable to represent this unknown value. And anytime you start using variables, well, you are uh, going into the world of algebra. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. And uh, another thing that I wanted to state here, and kind of go back to the prom, is uh, once you decided, oh, I'm going to use a variable to represent this unknown value, well, then you want to start thinking of ways you can model this type of, uh, you know, the information in the problem. And there's different type of creative ways you can take, but I'll show you a couple of these right now. But one, we can't do anything unless we establish uh, kind of some ground rules for this problem, and that is we're going to establish a variable, okay? So we're going to let the variable x equal the number of fives. Now, uh, I'm doing that because this is the, what the question's asking. How many fives does Ed have? Well, I'm gonna let X represent that amount, okay? Now, I do know that there's 126 bills total. That is in the problem right here. So how many um, tens would Ed uh, have? Well, if he has uh, X, uh, if X represents the number of fives he has and there's 126 bills total, 
Well, if I have 126 bills total and I subtract away the number of fives, which of course would be X, uh, this right, this expression, parentheses 126 minus X would represent the number of tens um, Ed has, all right? So some of you might be saying, well, do I have to use another variable to represent the number of um, uh, tens? No, and you gotta be careful because some of you that are familiar uh, with algebra, okay, might uh, think to yourself, well, maybe I can let one variable represent uh, the number of fives and maybe another variable like y represent the number of tens. Now, anytime you start um, having two distinct variables, this brings you into another type of uh, um, algebra topic or algebra equation called systems of equations. It's basically going to make the problem much more complicated and it's unnecessary. So you got to, again, think these things through. But uh, anyways, here is what we have. Now, at this point, we have this variable, x, okay? And we know uh, that represents the number of tens, but how can I figure out what x is? Well, the only way you're going to figure out what a variable is equal to or to find the value of that variable is you have to construct an equation, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can construct an equation. So let's think about it in this way. So we know that the total amount of money uh, Ed has is $840. Now, uh, he has fives and tens. So how much money does he have? Well, if you take the number of fives he has, right, that's how much money he has made up of the fives, and you add it together by how many tens he has, right? So let's say he has three tens, that's $30. So you take this amount and this amount, and we add this up, that's his total amount, $840. Now, we do know what the number of fives uh, are, right? Like we have a variable constructed, uh, constructed for that already. So we don't, we're not going to use this little pound sign. So how much money does he have in fives? Well, we're going to uh, uh, use this expression here, 5x, because he has this many fives. Now, let's be clear about something because money word problems are very interesting. So if we're talking about like 75 cents, if I wanted to express 75 cents, I'm going to use a decimal, 0.75. If I want to express $1.25, I'm going to use uh, 1.25. So change is going to be a decimal uh, less than 100, like 0.90 is, is 90 cents. $1.90 is 1.90. Okay, so five is five dollars, right? So there's no coins here, uh, but just to be crystal clear, because uh, the way I'm setting up this particular problem is uh, the way you construct or uh, you know construct the solution for a lot of money word problems, and that is another kind of uh, point here, is that you know money word problems in math are very very common, especially in algebra. But once you know how to solve a few different types of these problems, you can solve pretty much most of them. Okay. All right, so 5x is the, is the actual amount of uh, money he has with the fives, right? Again, he has X amount of fives, but the value is five times whatever that is, plus uh, $10. How many $10 bills does he have? Well, again, that's going to be 126 minus X. This is the number of tens he has. And then the value of this plus the value of this is 840. All right, so now we have a lovely algebraic equation and uh, really comes down to your ability to solve this equation to get the solution, okay? So if we solve for x, we have the answer. So let's go ahead and take that step now. And the step I'm referring to, of course, is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't stop our lovely uh, problem here if it wasn't important. Okay, it's important for me. It's a way to, you know, if you want to uh, support me, and you know, maybe you don't, but if you do, this is the best way uh, by sub uh, supporting, so by subscribing, excuse me, to my channel, maybe giving this video a thumbs up, and then of course hitting that notification bell. Now, this gives me the fuel to keep producing all this mathematics. I love teaching math. I would do it anyways, but um, by you doing this, it helps the algorithm uh, really push my content out to more people, which allows me to help more people, and that really is my end goal is to uh, you know teach math to people that are interested in mathematics or need help in math. And my biggest, biggest passion is to stop people from giving up on math, okay? That is really uh, my biggest uh, thing that I'm uh, you know motivated by, if you will, because so many people get frustrated with math and, and people often give up. And oftentimes, I've heard so many stories of people just quit on math 
10, 20, 30, 40 years ago that maybe wanted to be an engineer and it just totally altered their li- uh, the course of their life. Okay, now, now that might be a little dramatic, but it is true. Okay, and if I could find people and help them by maybe delivering some clear and understandable instruction and teaching in a non textbooky way, then that is my mission. Anyways, I appreciate you uh, letting me ramble here a bit, but by you subscribing, it does help me out. Now back to the problem. Okay, so here is our lovely equation, 5x plus 10, parentheses 126 minus x, parentheses is equal to 840. So let's go ahead and solve this lovely linear equation. Okay, so first things first, right here, we have a distributive property situation, so we need to take care of this. So 10 times 126 is going to be 1260, 1260, and then this 10 times that minus x is going to be negative x. All right, so at this point, we need to combine like terms. So I have a 5x and a negative 10x. So that's going to be a negative 5x. So I have uh, 1260 minus 5x is equal to 840. So what do we do, uh, need to do now? Well, I need to move uh, all my numbers to the other side and have my variable terms on the left. So I'm simply going to subtract 1260 from both sides of the equation. And I'm going to end up with negative 5x is equal to negative 420. I've got to be careful with those positive and negative values. And finally, to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 5, and I end up with x is equal to 84. Okay, so x is what? Well, remember, we said that x is the number of fives. But let's go ahead and check this. Um, and remember, our setup was uh, we have 126 bills total. Okay, so x is equal to 84. Okay, that's the number of uh, uh, five. So we want to know the actual number of tens. We're going to go ahead and take 126 minus that 84. So that's 42 tens. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if this works out. In other words, if I take five times this 84 plus I have 42 tens, so 10 times uh, this 42 right there, does this work out uh, to uh, be the total value of $840? Well, indeed it does. And you can also uh, plug this into the original equation as well. But let's go ahead and see the math here. So 5x, remember, this is the value uh, with 84 uh, fives, right? So uh, 84 times 5 is going to have $420. Now, how many tens does he have? Well, 126 minus x. So that's 126 uh, minus uh, 84, which is 42. So 10 times 42 is 420. That's how much money he has with the $10 bills. He has 420 with the $5 bills. And together, he has $840. Okay, so Ed is feeling pretty good about himself because he's got all this cash. I wonder where he's going to spend it. Maybe he's going to buy some math books or something. Who knows? Okay, but uh, anyways, again, the main idea here is uh, when you solve, uh, when you can really understand how to solve one particular type of problem in mathematics, you know, that's going to help you solve, you know, um, problems that are very similar to it. And the only way you're going to get better at math is through practicing. Okay, so we are talking about algebra. Let me give you a couple suggestions if you want to improve or learn more about algebra and algebra word problems. One, I have a ton of additional videos on algebra word problems uh, on my YouTube channel. Two, I'm going to leave links to all my main courses to include pre-algebra, algebra one, Geometry, Algebra 2. Matter of fact, I have a new course called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. That is the perfect uh, uh, course designed for those of you that want to get back into math. I start with basic math, get into algebra, geometry, so check that out. But anyways, you'll find the links to all those courses in the description below. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.